Okay, today guys, I'm gonna walk you through a full groom on this Springer Spaniel mix. As you can see, he has a lot of coat and we are going to pre-clip this dog. We are going to wash him, bathe him properly, prepare his skin and coat before we give him his final clip. As we move through this groom together today, guys, I'm gonna take the time to explain to you what products I'm using and why I'm choosing to. I'm gonna explain to you about the techniques that I'm using to trim pads, to trim nails, to clean ears and to do my scissor finish work and as well as my clipper work. I'm gonna share all that with you in one full groom right here today, guys. So let's get started. So Solly came in to see me today with about three months of coat. He is a Springer mix. We think he could be mixed with a coon hound, possibly even Bernice Mountain Dog, we're not sure. But the reason that we are pre-clipping Solly is because his coat was really heavy. It was full of dander. And by pre-clipping him, that gives me the opportunity to give him a much more beneficial bath because I'm removing all this excess coat and exposing his skin. I'll be able to clean his skin much better in the tub. So it was important to choose to give Sully a pre-trim, but I will be giving him another trim after he is completely dried, obviously bathed, and it will turn out beautifully. So again, Sully is not bathed yet. We are pre-trimming him before the bath, and we will be trimming him again with a seven blade after the bath. And you will see all these clipper marks and you'll be like, wow, this looks really bad. I don't like it. Don't worry about it. This is a pre-trim, guys. We're just getting the coat off of Solly. I'm going in the direction of the lay of the coat with my seven blade, you know, taking off as much as I can safely before the bath so I can ensure that his bathing experience is very beneficial to him. And what I mean by that is that we do not want to be bathing mats, you know. The mats will hinder us from being able to thoroughly clean his skin and coat in the tub. So we need to remove any matting or thick bulky coat before we get him in the tub. It is just going to benefit him greatly. These clipper lines that we're seeing are only there because his coat is just too thick. The dead hair is in the coat. That's why if, if you if you only pre-trim your dog and then you bathe them and you say, there you go, my haircut's done, it will look just like this, like what you're seeing with Solly. That's why I'm gonna show you how to properly give your dog a full groom by doing pre-trimming and finish trimming. I want you to note that I am really just doing all the seven blade work here for our pre-trim. I'm not worried about trimming in that sanitary area. I'm not worried about trimming in the pads of the feet. I'm just taking off all the bulk of the coat on the body and the legs for Solly during this pre-trim. So let's take a look at our groom so far with Solly here. The next thing we're going to address is this matted tail. Now this is an area that we're going to address. We have to assess this and address this. We're going to say, okay, let's take a look at this tail. Boy, there's dead hair in there. Obviously mom and dad aren't brushing his tail. And that's fine. Some people just don't brush their dogs. I mean, I discourage that. You know that. But I've decided to take this off and give Sully a natural tail because he's having to drag around all this coat on his tail that is just not being well cared for. So I am taking it off to give Sully a more comfortable tail to carry around. Because we can clearly see that there is a lot of dander and bad stuff building up here in his skin and coat due to the fact he has such a heavy coat on his tail and it's not being brushed. Let's just remember the importance of brushing your dog, guys. It exfoliates the dander and the skin, the dead skin cells. It exfoliates that off of your dog's skin and then you have to brush it out of the coat. That creates a much healthier skin and coat and that is part of the groom. So now we're getting ready to get Sully in the tub. He's pre-clipped. I'm gonna to talk to you about some methods I'm gonna use in the tub. We're going to wash him twice today. The first wash, I'm using a loofah and pre-mixing a product called Davis Degrease. And I'm gonna apply this to him with a loofah. Why a loofah? Because a loofah will push your shampoo power to new levels. Trust me, look at the lather I'm getting in this. It's also exfoliating his skin. The dander and the buildup, the loofah is going to start to release that as well as increase the blood flow to his skin and coat. Now the second wash we're gonna give Solly today is gonna be with my Prima Encore system. This is my bathing system. If you're interested in this, I will link it in the description below. I love my Prima bathing systems. I have two. This is a very portable system, the Encore unit, which is designed mostly for mobile groomers or home groomers. 
So in the tub, it goes for Sally. First, we're starting off with overly rinsing him. I'm overly rinsing him because he had so much dander buildup in his skin. So I'm just trying to soften everything on his skin so that he can benefit from a wonderful bathing process today. Starting with the Prima bath first, I got that wrong. I said I was starting with the degrease. I am following it up with the degrease. We're starting with the Prima bath, and inside the Prima bath, I am using a product from Bark to Basics called One Step Silky. It's a very, very good universal shampoo. It's a little bit moisturizing, which I can clearly see that Sully can benefit from that today with the dry skin and the dander that he had going on for him. So this is a wonderful, wonderful bathing process to. to I, I use so many different shampoos inside of my Encore unit, my Prima bathing system, and it just, the, the Encore unit itself is wonderful. It uses a low water volume and a high pressure, so it mixes the shampoo water with air. The water conservation that it produces is amazing. As well as with Prima, you can use any shampoo that you choose. Let me show you how gentle it is. It, it just produces a soft foam. You need to allow that soft foam to sit on your dog for about four minutes so that it can adhere to the dirt. There's nothing like a Prima bath, I'm telling you. I love it. I'm working on a very extensive demo for the Prima Encore unit specifically. I do have one on the Salon model, which is a fantastic model. I'll link that in the card right now for you guys if you want to see how it works. They both clean the same way. The Salon model can clean about 30 dogs consecutively. It's just a little bit more of a powerhouse for a bigger situation. And the Encore model is designed more for um, single dog use, one dog at a time. It can be great for a grooming salon, but as long as you're doing one dog at a time with breaks in between each dog which is the way that I groom in my salon a dog comes in I wash them clip them bathe them groom them a whole nine and then an hour and a half later I'm washing bathing and doing the same thing on another dog so the Prima Encore system would work great for a salon as long as you're not banging out dog after dog the pump in the Encore unit is housed in a smaller cavity you know it's in smaller housing so that it can be portable which is one of the great things about the Encore unit. Second wash. Now remember we mixed up that Davis D grease into a bucket with our loofah. Now I'm really going to exfoliate and degrease this poor little guy. His skin needs a complete rejuvenation and he's getting it right here today guys with the Davis D grease second wash and with our loofah. The loofah is definitely exfoliating his skin. It's stimulating blood flow to the skin, all of which is promoting good health for his skin and coat. So this was a great choice for him especially because he really was, was pretty grimy and pretty dirty and full of a lot of dander. So I want you guys to always take advantage of using these loofahs at home with your shampoo of your choice. It just does a wonderful job. Now let me show you how we're gonna wash Sully's face. And this tie wash every dog's face that comes into my shop. I use the Tropiclean Spa Facial Tear Stain Remover. It's gentle, it does not burn the eyes, it cleans amazingly well. And the reason I like to use it on the face is because it does clean so well and I know that it is not going to hurt their eyes. Now that Sally is completely clean, we have to thoroughly rinse all the product off of our dog, guys. I start by rinsing the top of the dog and let gravity take its course there and just work all the shampoo and product off your dog from the top down to the bottom. Hold the ears against the head, the side of the head like this so you can really get them rinsed off good. It's important to wash the ears of your dog, not inside the ear. That's cleaning the ears. We'll do that later. But it's important to wash everything guys the face too very important to wash it now it's time to dry Sally if you don't have a force dryer or a stand dryer like I do guys that's fine you should definitely be picking up the absorber towel. The absorber towel pulls so much water out of your dog's skin and coat and saves so much time on drying. And then you could just continue to let them air dry. But as a professional groomer, making the switch to the absorber towel saves me so much space in my shop and it just does a better job. It cuts down on my time drying the dog. There's a link in the description of this video if you're interested in picking up an absorber towel for yourself and use the code GOTOGROOMER to receive 10% off. I also made a very detailed demo on the absorber towel and I will link that in the card above. Now back to our demo. This is one benefit of force drying. I can clearly see the skin through the coat of the dogs as I'm drying them. Plus, I want you to take a look at how clean 
Solly's coat is after we gave him the bath that we did with the Davis degrees and with the Prima bathing system. You saw what he looked like before, guys. This is wonderful. Solly's all dry. Let's get back to some clipping. We're going to shave these pads. And the pads of the feet, we're going to shave in a V shape. I'm going to come all the way around the outer edge of the pad, everything that Solly's going to stand on. And I'm just going to remove all the hair easily. I'm using a 30 blade. You could use a 10 or a 15. Um, I don't prefer for people to use a 30 blade unless they're really comfortable with clipping. I like to use a 30 blade because I use it over the hair vac system. But we're shaving that big pad in a V shape. So we're just going to kind of pull back on the back pad and scoop out towards the top pad. That makes sense. Scoop out just like that in a V shape. We don't come at that pad straight on because there is a tendon right there in the middle of the pad. But now we're cleaning out the feet for Sully so that it doesn't feel like he's standing on a big pile of matted hair. If you've noticed a lot of weird sounds during this video, it's this guy right here. What are you talking about? I'm trying to make videos. What are you talking about? What? I can't hold you. I'm making a video. Right there. I am making a video. I cannot hold you. Okay, so let's pop a seven blade back on. We're going to go back and do our finish clipper work. Starting under the jawline, going with the lay of the coat, with the seven blade again, guys. Now we're going over all those areas that were just choppy and uneven because the coat was dirty when we pre-clipped it. So we're not going to get a nice clip on that coat until it's clean. So I'm just going over. You don't have to go over it completely. I'm just kind of going over the areas that really, you know, didn't get it good the first time. I start at the neck and the base of the skull and I just move all the way down the dog, down his back, his stomach, his body, down the legs, all with the lay of the coat. Now you are going to notice that you're still going to see some clipper marks on Solly. So we're going to pop a five blade on and erase those in a reverse clipping pattern. Only going over the clipper marks with a five in reverse, not the entire dog and it's just going to erase those clipper marks. This is a true professional grooming trick, guys, and I'm sharing it with you because I don't hide any information from you. You're my peeps. I show you how to get this done right and get your dog groomed like a professional. But this truly is the secret to producing that nice smooth finish like you saw in the beginning of this video that we are going to achieve with our groom on Solly today. Now you may have some questions about reverse clipping and erasing clipper marks. A five is the next longest blade to a seven. Now a seven is what we used on the body. So if we use a five in reverse, the length will be equivalent to a seven blade. Now we're going to use snap-on combs. We're going to use a number one snap-on comb over a 10 blade to set the length on the top of Solly's head. Snap-on combs save us a ton of scissor work, guys. If you're not sure of the benefits of snap-on combs, I have a video that I made showing you how to use them and how they save you time and a lot of scissor work. I'll link that in a card. But I'm just going from the base of his skull towards his brow with the number one snap-on comb over a 10 blade. Come up the side of the cheek here. Now we are going to blend all this together with scissor work and thinning shears and use some 10 blade work around the base of his ears. And what we're about to do is called venting. So I removed my snap-on comb. I got my 10 blade. We're going to vent right at the base of the earlobe here, right in front of the ear. We're just taking all that bulky hair out because it's really going to hinder airflow into his ears. He is a spaniel. That is a, often a big problem for all different types of spaniel breeds. So what I'm doing is gently clipping away the hair on his earlobe and coming up about a quarter of the way up the inside of his ear. Now we're going to shave the face, a spaniel face, like we would on a cocker spaniel. So I have a 10 blade on yet again, guys. I'm going to clean the lips up. I'm going to, and this is a touchy area for dogs, mind you. So you really have to work with them. We're going to come straight down the muzzle from the corner of the eye, straight down the muzzle. And we're dragging that blade, if that makes sense, guys. We're dragging the 10 blade towards us in a reverse 
direction down the muzzle of the face. We're gonna pull these lips back so we can get right along the edge here and clean up the edge of the lip. Solly is an older dog, so his teeth are very sensitive. So he minds this a little bit more than most dogs do, but I still wanted to keep it in the demo so that I can show you how we do the face. And we still have this 10 blade on. We're gonna come in and clean up the armpit areas because a 10 blade is safe to use here. Consider all this sanitary work, okay? The face, around the mouth, the armpits, around the privates. And Solly's a bigger dog, so it's kinda easy to get in here and do the sanitary. I can just hike this leg up. I'm using my 10 blade and I'm just gently cleaning up all this underneath him where his testicles used to be around the penis. You can clip all around the penis very gently and safely as long as you're using a 10 blade. It's important to keep this hair trimmed. It keeps the dog sanitary, keeps them cleaner. Now it's time for scissor finish work. We're gonna start with the feet. So you comb everything up or brush everything up, all the hair that's sticking up, and you just scissor it nice and round to the length that we already set when we clipped the top of the foot. Uh, you'll just keep brushing and combing the hair out from between the toes and scissoring it off flush with the length of the foot. If you had more length on your dog, then that's what you would match that to. Now let's clean up over the top of this ear. I am using the Kenchi Lightning Shear, but you could use a straight shear here. I am blending this in kind of a scissor action. I'm not really thinning, I'm just scissoring with my blending shears. But what I want you to notice is that I have my finger underneath Sully's ear and I'm pulling it up, pushing up the hair, making it stand up as I roll his ear over my finger. Here, I'm gonna show you again. Look how I'm, my other finger, my, my first finger is rolling up underneath his ear so that the hair on top of his ear is gonna pop up and I know when I'm scissoring off. And then when his ear lays naturally and hangs naturally, it's, it's gonna look nice and tidy. And this technique you can use over the top of any ear where you're blending an ear to the head, you know, whether it's a Shih Tzu or some type of mix, you can use this technique on other breeds. So now for the top of his head, what we're gonna do is basically just create a little bit of a dome. I mean, he, he is a mixed breed, so we can do whatever we want, but his coat resembles a spaniel. His face, his head structure resembles a spaniel. So I like to leave a little bit of a dome on top of their head. And I am scissor blending my clipper work to my scissor work. That's what I'm doing right here, combing forward, and anything that's sticking out and looking bad is just messing up my shape. I'm gonna scissor it off. You're making a shape here, guys. So you wanna look at it from different angles and always comb up, comb, comb, comb to get all the hair you've already clipped off the dog so you can see what needs to be trimmed. This is all scissor finish work and it is very important to tie your clipper work and your finish work together. Now we're gonna scissor the leg, tidy up all the things that our clipper just couldn't get to or the dog wasn't tolerant to have it being clipped. Now here's the danger zone. This knuckle right here, back here, all dogs have it. When we're doing a short summer trim, this you're gonna wanna tidy up or it's gonna look like you didn't finish your scissor work. Be very careful of that I often like to just go sideways with my scissor like this in that area and make sure that I am fully aware what my scissor is catching because the last thing I want to clip is is part of his flesh so be very careful guys but you can do it you can tidy this up real nice now I want to share a product that I just love this is nature specialty silk and finish you shake it up spray about two squirts on your hands rub your hands together and just shine up your beautiful spaniel this is great on a on a beagle on a labrador on a golden retriever mainly though flat coated breeds even chihuahuas dachshunds it's just gorgeous they they shine like a mirror when you apply this and just 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 rub it down through there you don't want too much you don't want it to look greasy but it just adds a finish that the the, the owner goes holy moly this dog looks gorgeous when they see it just polishes up the dog you know and Sully's a beautiful guy so he deserves the best I'll be sure to link all the products in the description of this video below so that if you're interested in them for your own pets or if you're a groomer then you can go hit that up on Amazon I promise you I love to share my secrets and part of that is the products that I use I hope you've enjoyed this video I have enjoyed making it for you and if it has helped you please leave a comment and let me know and I want to give a shout out to my friend Levi who did all the filming today isn't he awesome thanks Levi we love you <laughs>